So what is a hard pass? The White House, the Congress, the Treasury Department, the State Department, the Pentagon, they all have separate hard passes that reporters can get that allow them to come and go more easily uh, to these various institutions. You still go through security, but it means you don't have to get somebody's permission each time. If you don't have a hard pass, you could still go into the White House as a reporter, but you have to apply for a day pass. And it is up to the White House whether they say they have time to process it or whether everything is full and it's not possible to have anybody with a day pass. Or during emergencies, it's very hard to get a day pass. If there's an emergency at the White House, you really need a hard pass to get there. Traditionally, to get a hard pass, you have to first be credentialed by the Standing Committee of Correspondence, which is a group of reporters on Capitol Hill who determine who gets credentials to cover Capitol Hill. And then you submit uh, to a clearance process, a security screening by the Secret Service. So CNN has other reporters who will be at the White House and can ask questions. But you know, I don't really think that's the issue here. The issue is, does the president get to decide that he can pull the credentials of a reporter because he does not like the questions he's asking. The president clearly has the power to pull the hard pass of anybody who works for him in the White House. The press would argue he does not have the power to do that for the reporters, because we're not there working for him, we're there working for the American people. Data released from Canadian immigration officials show a record-breaking number of Americans applied for asylum in Canada during 2017. That number was up by more than six times as 2016, according to The Guardian. The 2,550 U.S. citizens who applied for citizenship last year made up the third largest group after Haitian and Nigerian immigrants. According to The Guardian, most of those seeking asylum in Canada were Americans who had non-citizen parents. The spike in asylum seekers makes sense. President Trump in 2017 said he was ending temporary protections for immigrants from El Salvador, Honduras, Haiti, and Sudan. In October, Trump announced he wanted to end birthright citizenship, which grants citizenship to children born in the U.S. to non-citizen parents. While Business Insider reports there's been no official policy move on the plan yet, Canada could possibly see another boost in American asylum seekers in 2018. It's that time of year again, the presidential turkey pardon. Drumstick, you are hereby pardoned. The memes, the lame jokes. It is hard to believe that this is my seventh year of pardoning a turkey. Time flies, even if turkeys don't. <laughs> <laughs> the gobbling. It's all there. Yes, this tradition seems very silly, but it actually has some deep historical roots. We know Ben Franklin was a fan of turkeys. He called the turkey respectable and a bird of courage. He even said it would not hesitate to attack a grenadier of the British guards who should presume to invade his farmyard with a red coat on. And there's a story that Abraham Lincoln's son convinced him to spare a turkey. President Truman was the first to have a turkey receiving ceremony and Eisenhower continued the tradition, but those guys were destined for the dinner table. President Kennedy also spared a turkey and the move was the first to be jokingly referred to by the press as a pardon. But we didn't get our first official turkey pardon until George H.W. Bush. Well, this turkey must have said some prayers of his own and we're gonna grant him a special presidential pardon uh, he will be going into early retirement, I'm told. Every president since then has upheld the tradition. So there you have it. How we got to the modern presidential turkey pardon.
crater larger than the area of Paris was discovered underneath the ice in Greenland. It's 31 kilometers, or over 19 miles, and is one of the top 25 largest impact craters on Earth. The find was published in the journal Science Advances, and researchers say that the impact could have happened as recently as 12,000 years ago, toward the end of the last ice age. The crater that's buried under half a mile of ice was found using an ultra-wideband chirp radar system flown over the crater. Analysis of the crater showed shocked quartz and other impact-related grains, including glass. Although further research is needed to narrow down a more accurate date for the crater, the team has found a region southwest of the crater with possible debris from the impact that could help them figure that out. Thank you. 